Go ahead. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically a question? Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. Can you say categorically? You are fake news. Sir. I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Dave versus the MSM. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. If amazing, you actually were able to find this video. Uh, this channel uh, for years, but it's only been getting worse, especially as we every time we come up to a installation operation, which usually occurs in November of even number years, the suppression, the uh, censorship gets Worse and worse. Imagine that. You could probably tell the, the channels and the platforms that are not controlled opposition by how they get targeted. Hmm? Right. Or if they don't, well, that should tell you something. As I've uh, tried to get the word out. And that's why the best way to get our information that you'll get from no other source, there's no other platform on the internet that has somebody in charge of the platform, in this case me, that has 36 years experience on policy issues dealing with the scum behind the curtain, also known as totalitarian thugs or globalist cult puppets. A real good example is that I recently, I, I could not post this interview on, uh, and, and we're always there at DaveJanda.com. That's where you go. We have a tremendous amount of free public information, but there's also the uh, premium service content where I go in depth and content I cannot speak about on any social media platform or on the radio because of the choke points in the FCC. I recently did an interview uh, with um, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who is the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury under Ronald Reagan. So it was Dr. Dave Janda, healthcare policy uh, doc from the front line of healthcare delivery that has been involved in healthcare policy for 36 years when the Reagan administration asked me to come to Washington as a consultant and work on healthcare policy with then Surgeon General C. Everett Cope and a number of other people in the Reagan administration. Talking to and with the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury under Ronald Reagan, Paul Craig Roberts. Now, both of us, uh, when you talk to folks in D.C., um, they get an immediate sad frown on their face when you hear either of our names because we tell people what they need to know. It's not what they want to hear. And Dr. Roberts and I do everything in our power to undermine and expose their operations. That interview is at DaveJanda.com and it's free. Yeah, I don't have 30 cents to spend a day for $9 a month, even though you're playing $20 for a pizza. I don't, for content that I can't get anywhere else that puts me months, years ahead of the curve. If you're in that camp, well, lucky you, yet again, uh, through to the benevolence of the subscribers who truly support freedom for 30 cents a day on our platform, you get to hitch a ride on the free wagon of content. And that interview you will never see on any other platform. Paul Craig Roberts. And as have we have outlined, the cult focuses on chaos, focuses on crisis. In fact, remember, back in 2023, they had their, oh, there's going to be, the World Economic Forum announced that there's going to be a poly crisis in the world. Not just a crisis, but a poly crisis. And if you think about it, they, they always give you a little warning. These endless wars, Russia, Ukraine, Middle East, China, Taiwan, domestic wars on, in every country against its own citizens, right? Uh, add to that their ongoing casualties from that that they mandated and the border sieve with them allowing some many folks that are not the nicest of people, let's just say, into every country of the world. People that have been released from prisons and Venezuela, Cuba, 
just to name a few. Their destruction of the rule of law. You see, folks, their polycrisis is purely, it's not because of an accident or bad set of coincidences or because of incompetence. It's a willful plan because they need to divert your attention so that you don't point the fingers at the real perpetrators of the financial crash that they're bringing down. And understand, these warped-minded psychopaths of the cult, they do give you a warning about what's coming, but they're counting on 99.9% .9 of the people not to be aware. And you might say, that's impossible. Well, <laughs> really? Look at the debate at the end of June, right? A number of us have been saying, this dude, you know, that wanders around aimlessly around the Oval Office or whatever it is, has had many years, over a decade, of mental capacity issues. Yet, Right outside here in the People's Republic of Ann Arbor. I had no idea he had any. What? What? He had no idea? No. There are millions of people in our own country, let alone probably billions of people around the world, that don't realize that this guy, he's been out to lunch for... You know, Johnny Carson. I like Johnny Carson. And I used to watch a show when I was a kid. And now they have reruns on uh, Antenna TV, so you can watch it at night. And um, Johnny Carson was doing some shows, this would be 35 years ago now, that are on reruns, where he was hammering Biden for his plagiarism, his criminal activity, him being a mental midget. Yeah, in his monologues. But yet... I had no idea. Oh, whoa, bring, let me wring my hands. Yeah, that's what we're dealing with. So even the, the cult counts on, you know what? And I gotta figure it out. We can warn them all we want, but at least in our own, in their own weird psychopathic ethics, if you wanna call it that, they say, well, we warned them. So, hey, you know, we told them what we were gonna do. IMF, International Monetary Fund globalist cult organization says world needs to prepare for the unthinkable after the war in Ukraine from Catabella Roberts International Monetary Fund Managing Director Christina Georgieva has warned that the world needs to be prepared to better handle shocks and the unthinkable in a post world and in light of the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war the unthinkable how about a financial collapse? FDIC, you know, we're, you know, FDIC, uh, that's the entity in the federal government that, quote, insures your bank accounts up to, what, 250000 was just on their website, the FDIC. They, in their website, uh, it's kind of hard to, to dig out, but you can dig it out if you dig deep enough. They're covering $17 trillion of deposits in the United States in banks. So uh, their reserves have to be greater than 17 trillion, right? If they're going to cover it. No, they're 125 billion. Yeah. A thousand billion make up a trillion. So we got $17,000 billion they're covering, or 17 trillion, with 125 billion. Yeah. Can you say musical chairs in the financial world? FDIC chief says U.S. is ready if a big Wall Street bank failed. They're giving you a heads up. The head of the FDIC says the U.S. would be prepared to handle a collapse of a major Wall Street bank. Well, not if you look at their numbers that are on their own website that they tell you, well, we have them on our website. <laughs> FDIC chief also says the U.S. is ready with when that U.S. bank falls and they're standing ready right now. Then, remember, they'll tell you, the economy's fine because look at all the jobs that are being created. Philadelphia Fed admits the U.S. They did this, you know, late in the evening one day, so you didn't know about it. 
Federal uh, Philadelphia Fed admits U.S. payrolls are overstated by at least 800,000 jobs. The, this is from Zero Hedge. The first red flags emerged in the summer of 2022. That's when the Biden Labor Department started well and truly rigging the labor market data. In other words, back in 2022 and accelerating to present day, less and less full-time jobs have in fact been added until we got to the absurd situation over the last year that all new jobs have been part-time jobs, not full-time jobs. Not only has all job creation in the past six years of since May of 2018 has been exclusively for foreign-born workers, and there's been zero job creation for native-born Americans since June of 2018. The Philadelphia Fed found that the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the Biden Department and Biden administration has overstated payrolls just in 2022 alone by 1.1 million. Just in 2022. But here we go again. Only this time, the Bureau of Labor Statistics now says that for the past year, they've overstated payrolls by 800,000. See, the way they keep you locked into their paper vapor debt-based system is by lying to you. Regulators told to be ready to handle failed clearinghouses, such as the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the Intercontinental Exchange. Regulators must equip themselves with tools such as bail-in bonds to deal quickly with a failed clearinghouse for stocks, bonds, or derivatives without having to call on taxpayers for, for cash. You see, a bail-in is this. When uh, you have your money, let's say, in a bank, and they have extraordinary debts, such as like their loans on commercial real estate go under, and the bank starts to go under, they can bail in. You see, your deposit can be used to pay off their debts. And you're going to say, well, wait a minute, that's my money. No, they see it as their money when you deposit that money in a bank. So you might think you have $1,000 in your savings account, in your checking account. But the bank might see it as you have maybe $10. And they can use the rest for their bail-in operation when they need it. The International Monetary Fund again. The International Monetary Fund is warning the risks of a breakdown of the world financial system have risen to levels only seen during past crises. The IMF again steps and make a lot of warnings. A lot of red flags through that IMF, huh? Yeah. So they can say, we told you, don't blame us. IMF steps up its warning to U.S. overspending and ballooning debt. The International Monetary Fund leveled an unusual direct criticism at U.S. policymakers, saying the country's recent standout performance amongst advanced economies was driven by an unsustainable fiscal debt-based policy. But they're also telling you how to protect yourself. The IMF recently wrote about gold, you know, that barbarous relic. Quote, gold bullion is not a claim and does not have a corresponding liability. What have I told you? Gold, physical gold. If you hold it, my dad used to say, if you hold it, you own it. Gold, silver. There's no counterparty risk associated. There's no debt associated with it. Gold bullion is not a claim and does not have a corresponding liability. Counterparty risk. It is treated as a financial asset because of its special role as a means of financial exchange in international payments by monetary authorities and as a reserve asset held by monetary authorities. End quote. In other words, folks, we're holding it at the IMF. All the banks that we kind of look after are holding it because there's no debt associated with it. That if you hold it, you own it. That it's a store of value. The World Bank just released another globalist organization, a handbook for asset managers on how asset managers, not you or me, but asset managers, bankers, 
banksters running financial institutions, how to invest in gold, how to invest in paper stuff. No, gold, as well as silver. In a quote, this is what they say, quote, quote, in the modern era, gold continues to play a critical role in the global financial system, serving as a hedge against inflation, a safe haven asset, and a reserve asset for central banks. Gold remains a crucial component of the global financial system and is likely to continue to play an essential role in the future. Yeah, can you say BRICS? Because they are developing an Enbridge system which is a, a new trading system that is not based on the dollar. And they say they are backing it with hard assets, gold, silver, oil, natural gas, agricultural products. So then the question, well, and you might say, well, you know, you're, we're okay in the United States because we, we have 8,300 tons of gold. Do we? I don't know. Well, it's at Fort Knox and it's at West Point, Dave, come on. Really? How do we know? Well, Dave, because uh, but our gold reserves are audited on a regular basis. Interesting. When was the last time the gold reserves of the United States were audited? Time's up. 1956. What? Really? Yeah. Almost 70 years ago was the last time the gold reserves of the United States were audited. And remember in 1971, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, where now the gold was, the dollar was not backed by gold, but backed by the faith and credit of the U.S. government. The credit of the United States government were $35 trillion minimum if you had unfunded liabilities, a couple hundred million dollars in debt and faith in these kooks? Did you watch the debate? You got faith in that? Watching Biden? And all the people around him saying, he's telling the public, oh, he's fine. Oh, he's great. Faith and credit? Oh, okay. So a bunch of companies, a country started taking gold out of the United States, and that's when Nixon broke the... Broke, the, broke gold's link with the dollar. Hasn't been reestablished. And now we've got a huge number of other countries that are pulling their gold. What's left here? So your question is, well, you know, how, how much of the gold we have left here, whatever's left here, is ours, and how much is other people's that are still haven't claimed it yet? The Federal Reserve refuses to provide records of foreign gold holdings. Weeks after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell evaded a sitting congressman's questions about the central bank's foreign gold holdings, the Fed has also declined to comply with a Freedom of Information Act, which they're legally responsible for, for records about such holdings. The Federal Reserve's lack of transparency comes amidst reports that countries are removing their gold and other assets from the United States in the wake of the unprecedented Western sanctions imposed on Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. Stefan Gleason, a financial analyst, stated the following. The Fed doesn't want anyone to know that foreign governments and other central banks are yanking their gold from America's shores because it would reveal the folly of U.S. monetary and foreign policy. What it would reveal is uh, the tank's empty or potentially near empty. Yeah. Look, the red flags are waving all around you financially. Take the hint. I mean it. Because their ultimate goal, the totalitarian thugs, is to make you destitute. Because if you're destitute, you willingly give up your remaining freedoms, liberties, and our country and the world. Protect yourself, insulate yourself. I understand. Gold's been going up in price. That barbarous relic that nobody wants. Why has it been going up? Because every they're all hoovering it up. And they want to make sure you don't so they can hoover up more. The thugs. So silver is 
significantly cheaper than gold. It's going to do well too. Because thousands of years have told us it's a store of value. Protect yourself. We are available 24-7 at DaveJanda.com. Join us. Join us. You'll be... You will be never disappointed after you visit DaveJanda.com. But you will be educated and empowered. And our hope is you'll take that information and empower others with that information. Because that's ultimately how we beat and take down these totalitarian thugs. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. Thanks for your time today.